What's going on, guys? Joey here. Today I'm with the 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 mythical creature Isaac Whistler, who is indeed alive. Um, and then Will is gonna just exist, and maybe if he has any impulsive questions he wants to ask, he can just slot that right in. Um, but basically, I wanted to have Isaac uh, come on here because he was one of the few. I don't think there were any other flex coaches at USAPL Nationals except maybe Camden. Did you see Camden? I don't know yeah. if he was uh I don't know exactly like what he was doing over like was he when I say that I say there's an article 14 and I don't know if he has yet <laughs> to swap and I am certain that he would not violate any rules. But um I saw, I saw him on the roster for PA Nets. Yeah, I think he's I, I know that. I know that he swapped over for that, so I think he should be good to go and I think that is a topic that we'll kind of get get into. But um I guess my first question is uh have you been, man? Have you been, Mr. Isaac? I've been good. I've just been focusing on trying to do my my day-to-day -day life. I think uh after last year's Nationals, that was my last meet as a junior. I think that um moving to the open is is scary and i think that a lot of like juniors that move into the open um kind of have to find themselves again because it is definitely like a change and i i feel like i see a lot of people fall off at that point um, and i didn't just like want to become that person so i think instead of deciding that i was just gonna like be done competing and only coach or find something else. I think I just needed to take a step back. So I just did like bodybuilding for basically like three months. And at that point I had talked to you about um, just going through like a, a back injury and adductor injury and knee injury. And it was just kind of like overwhelming. Just, I mean, you knew that I drive an hour to my gym and I did that for three years. It's an hour one way. And so like, it's hard driving an hour, getting to the gym and like feeling good. And then you get under the bar and the bar hurts and you're like, okay, cool. I just wasted like two hours of my day. And it's like, it just got really demoralizing mentally. So I took a step back, um, just for like a couple months to really just kind of recalibrate. And then, man, that's my first time coming back from like a longer hiatus, uh, like away from like the big three and it was much harder than i thought it was going to be so uh it was definitely an adjustment trying to come back and i think that you compare yourself to like the best version of yourself especially like with social media and i really just didn't want to continue doing that i didn't think it was good for me i didn't think it was the thing to do in the moment so i really just wanted to focus on um just my coaching and and just doing things that made me happy and feel better so started doing that um and then really i mean yeah didn't didn't really didn't really bug joey much until the last little bit of prep and then we finished that out together and i mean i think i think i told you but i think we we at the meet finished like i think it was like 130 pounds heavier than anything we hit in training so it was it was definitely yeah it was definitely like a really good end to the to the training so yeah i think um what you said about the juniors dude it's like i don't know what it is um you guys well it's almost like you're starting over and you're ranking if you're high, highly ranked in juniors and you're going to the open you know, you don't get the spotlight as much. Yeah, I think could be, a, could be a thing there. At Junior Worlds, we had like sub juniors that were like so good that they were like beating the juniors, and I think they can fully, or maybe he is a junior. I don't know if Elliot is a. I don't know, actually. I think he's eighteen, but he's got like many years as a junior still, so they kind of have that like confidence. It's almost like somebody who's in the open, right? And then, you know, five years for them seems like so long. Um, they have so much time. They can really kind of find their bearings and just kind of enjoy being a junior. But then once you hit that open, um, 
I've seen it time and time again. You have these lifters that if there is a significant gap between their numbers, it's all, yeah, it's like you're starting over again. Um, it's very interesting uh, because the juniors, like, and I'm going to keep bringing her up because she's such a good example. Like, Alba just, you know, as a junior, was able to out total the open total from earlier this year. And I think for her, it's like different because she has like that motivation to like, okay, I I can win open. I'm right there. I just need to keep working versus when you kind of get – and it's okay. Like, it's very interesting, right, because I'm curious how many junior champions are within one year up or down of like the junior limit has someone become an open champion um i know jesus has i'm not sure if amanda has um i don't think russ has but it's like interesting it's just an interesting thing to think about and i think what you did taking that step back um just recalibrating letting all the you know the battle scars from the juniors kind of heal up and then you know reset your mind and then come back and then have a good you know first meet in the open I think – oh, wait. Was this your last meet in the juniors or this your first meet in the open? This is technically my first meet in the open. Okay, yeah. So so my original train of thought was correct. The um, – you know, hitting that meet as an open – I mean, it looked like you had a lot of fun. I was watching it, um, and, it, you know, it seemed like you got really into it, and you – you know, everything was – like, it looked like the old Isaac, like the Isaac that I remember yeah. from – the the olden days and i think that's that's really important and i think um you know i think a junior going all out for their juniors and then once they get into the open taking that step back to kind of all right let me reset let me plan for long term let me think about what i need to do to kind of get myself you know reset to go on this journey um in the open so I think that's great, and it's good to hear that, you know, I mean, dude, like, driving an hour to the gym, like, by the time, the other day, um, there was traffic, so my 20-minute, 15-minute drive to Zoo ended up being, like, much longer, and I was, like, I was, like, not in the mood when I got there. It's, like, dude, you're just, like, in traffic, and your pre-workout's done, and, like, you're just screwed, right? Um, so I totally understand. Traffic's different though. Mine was sixty-two miles, no traffic. Just like flying. <laughs> so yeah, back, yeah, back road. Just, it's yeah. Crazy. That's like still eighty fun, miles, though. eighty miles an hour down the highway. But yeah, and it's honestly, lost. I've never been. Yeah, I've never been one to like crave that attention or like yeah. really be like, oh, I need to be number one. I've enjoyed being strong, and I obviously love lifting. That's why I'm here. I love coaching, but. I think it was more so – I think that's why the transition for me isn't as hard because I know going into the open, like, okay, I have no expectations of how I'm going to place. Or like, okay, going from winning almost every meet as a junior to now, like, if I'm going to be competing with the open people at nationals, like, I'm it's going to be a long time until I win and some people are going to have to either get hurt or fall off. And so I'm totally okay with that. I think the thing that really mentally takes it out of me is – the injury and it's is like injuries and basically just being in pain every day is like yeah. not fun. <laughs> so that's kind of what it was. That was more of the catalyst than the actual, I feel like a lot of junior lifters that fall off are people that can't take it mentally. They can't go from being really good to just being average. And whereas me, I, I don't care. So um, it's more so just, it was more so about trying to stay healthy for the long term. Um. Now you have an injury that's kind of unusual and I don't, I want to say it's not an injury now, but I do remember the days when you were pressing five plates in the gym. Um, I guess for those that don't know, and I know this definitely kind of snowballed things. Um, what, what is this injury and how has it affected your lifts? Yeah, so the injury you're talking about is just my my AC joint. So <gasps> I separated separated my AC joint fully um, snowboarding. I think that would have been almost that three years ago now. And I think that's almost 
two years ago? I think it was actually two years ago. The reason um, I bring that up is because I feel like that started like a cascade of just all types of stuff. And, you know, when you're out of the gym for something like that, and then you try to go back to the gym, we tend to try to lift close to where we were. But, like, the amount of, like, pull, like, you just got to restart from, like, zero and build everything back up and then learning how to bench again. I mean, your anatomy is different. You know, like your literal structure of how your shoulder comes back is going to be different um, than it was before. And how is the pain on that now? Like, is it completely healed? Or? Yeah. So I always tell people like in the gym that are asking about it, it's kind of unfortunate being a power lifter. You have to do three movements and it only the only one of the only things that hurts on is bench. And unfortunately, that is one of the three movements we have to do. Yeah. Um, so it really doesn't hurt with most other movements. Like free range of motion is fine. Doing most of anything, it it's really doesn't hurt that much. Um, but just flat barbell bench hurts it. And the, the frustrating thing is I never really know when it's going to hurt. It's just warming up. It's like, oh, okay, it hurts. It's almost like a – it kind of feels like a peck – strain that I'm going to have for the rest of my life. Um, so it comes and goes with pain, but yeah, that was the first time that I've actually been like really injured. And to be honest, the, the, the shoulder hasn't taken too much mentally from like me and my training. It, it is literally like the energy that I was able to build flex on, you know, that's why it's like, um, you know, getting back to that and putting myself in a position to, um, just operate freely on the platform, operate freely in the gym, uh, you know, and with my lifters, it's, it's like really important because we are, we're not like normal people to where, um, you know, a doctor could tell a normal person that works a desk job that doesn't care about working out like, Oh, you shouldn't lift. And they'll be like, Oh, it's fine. I don't really lift that much anyway. But for us, like that's our happiness comes from like movement, you know, um, even going outside to walk and, and things like that is like, super beneficial for the mentals and the mentals trickles down to everything else. So, um, what did you pull this meet? 750. Yeah. So that was, that's good. Yeah. yeah <laughs> that's and, I mean, yeah. the heaviest I hit in training <laughs> at 705. So, yeah. yeah so I was, I was really, really happy with that. Yeah. I mean, I think, honestly, your lower lift should continue to just, like, go up. My only – my thing is, like, the bench, right? Like, the shoulder. Like, we don't know. Um, it is a kind of crazy thing because – This meet, actually – I think this this bench in this meet was the heaviest I've done since yeah. tearing my shoulder. That was 430. I, dude, I think you can – like, if you can come back, if you can get to that 450, 470 range, four, 500 even – I mean, you're going to have the mental fortitude to be like, bro, I, I, I separated my AC joint and I came back and I was able to like get back to where I was before. Like nothing in your life is going to stop you from anything really. Um, let's get into the meat a little bit. What was, what was it like? Uh, wait, first off, Will, did you have any lifters? I, I know Isaac, you did, but Will, did you have lifters doing USAPL nets? Eddie. I only had one, one lifter. Eddie Tameo? Or a different no. Eddie? No, it was a girl. Jackie Bates. Everyone else is switching oh. to PA. Wait, Mike, you had Eddie. Okay. Um, I guess from what you guys have heard from your lifters, what what was this? What was it like at the Nationals? Um, because people were asking me, like, what did you think about, you know, what happened at Nationals? And I was like, you know, I'm going to be honest. I was, I was, like, out of the country until, like, the last days. Um... So I'm not really sure. So I was just Isaac. You were there. Um, you know, were you in prime time? No. Yes. Um, I was not. Um, what was the what was your session like? Did you handle any prime time sessions? And what I mean, what was your vibe of the meet? What was your, you know, did it seem like people were on the way out, or was it like nobody would know the difference if anything was going on in the background? Yeah. So I think uh, I've been. In the last couple months, or I would say within the last year and a half, I've been to probably four or five national level meets at USAPL, and somehow 
they all look the same. They've all just been like concrete venues that are like very dark and like have the same exact layout. So it's kind of it kind of looked like most of the other meets that have been run there, um, like for USAPL. It was a four platform meet, which is pretty typical. I think Lombard, Illinois, was five platforms. Um, but other than that, I think they're 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 usually four. There was, I believe, ten, maybe twelve racks in the warm up room. It got hectic at times, especially on the la- latter half of the meet because the platforms were going at extremely variable speeds. I know platform one was like just starting benches by the time that platform three was done deadlifting. And so it was like, I mean, it was like very drastically different as far as the timing goes um, of like warming up lifters and such. But I found that from a competitor standpoint, there was obviously still a lot of competitors. I think it was like 950 or 900 um, competitors. And so there wasn't a lack of people in the warm up room or athletes competing. But I will say, I feel like Nationals has always been a place where. All of the high level lifters, all of the people that have a large following on Instagram, can I have pause a lot you real of quick? Teams. Can I pause you real quick? Yep. Will, while he's doing, while he's explaining that, can you go to the Powerlifting America website and check Open Nationals and see how many people signed up? Because I think the roster is live. All right, continue, Isaac. Yeah. So basically, um, that Nationals has always been a place where you go to for all the high level people they catch up with their friends they catch up with the teams that they they they've heard, they've been friends with they catch up with people that they meet on Instagram they you you meet it's your like coach for the first time exactly every year um i haven't gone to USAPL nationals in a while so i don't know what it was like the past couple but i think back to like lombard illinois in 2019 and that was like the pinnacle of like This is where everyone goes. If you are in powerlifting, if you are like a part of powerlifting, if you want to meet somebody that you idolize in powerlifting, you go to that meet and they will be there. Um, And I would say it was like 60% of that. If you were looking for a lifter, there probably weren't there. If you were looking for like coaches, um, they were probably there. There was a lot of coaches there. But um, from the coaches that I talked to, a lot of them, said that this will be their last meet as they switch over to powerlifting america so i think it's really hard to say i don't know if chasing that kind of reunion type meet will ever be something that we'll be able to to get um just because of the environment that we're in right now but it's it's really hard to say so i think april's the people's best shot one one thing i will say though is with pa uh, Will, were you able to f- figure that out? Yeah, the roster opened, but it doesn't say exactly how many people are competing, if that's what you're looking for. But I would... Does it look like a lot? Like 200? Like 200 So far, I mean, we're like seven months out, so... Yeah, that was early registration. Um, I mean, I just saw I just saw people on social media saying, like, oh, there's way more people than I thought would sign up already. But 200 is, like, more than the first two, um, I think, but... With Powerlifting America, they split up, you know, they have, like, Open, which is, like, one, and then they have Age Division, which is, like, Masters, Juniors, Sub-Juniors, which is also pretty fun. So, I don't think we're going to get that meet that's, like, every single person all at the same place, but it's still going to be, um, I still think we're going to have, like, a significant amount of, I mean, you're going to see the most competitive Nationals of all time ever in the history of Nationals ever, because... Um, you know, usually for the five raw nationals that we've won, I'll go in and be like, yeah, we're going to win these like hundred percent. But now it's like, (laughs) like, I don't know who's going to win. It's going to be a fight. We're going to have to, everybody's going to have the battle for it. It's going to be, it's going to be tough aside from like two classes, um, maybe three, it's going to be like super, super crazy competitive. 
and like we just don't know and that's exciting um because there's like a lot more on the line now like if you win nationals then you go to worlds if you win worlds you go to sheffield whereas like if you win usapl nationals i actually don't know what comes after that but i don't think it's a meet giving pro it all. huh the pro series yeah but like what's the do you know what the payout is on that is They've, yeah. they've been changing it every year. So, like, the payout, if you win, if you won this year's Nationals was, I think, $500. But then you also get your pro card, and then that puts you into the pro series. But I know they're reworking the pro series this year, so I don't know what the, how that's going to go. Yeah, I just think, um, I mean, you've been to Worlds. It's like, I don't know if you've been to, like, the Giga Worlds, where it's like, wow, this is Worlds. I don't, I think you... I mean, 2021 Worlds was crazy. Full on world. Yeah, but I think um, you guys are in a small little. It looked like a really small room. We were at the Alico headquarters. Yeah, so yeah. even Junior Worlds was in like a very, very fancy hotel that had like multiple seating levels and it was on a freaking beautiful island with like. It was just like. Yeah, it's. You're seeing, you know, that effect that you describe where you're meeting all these people from all these different places. It's that, but like the Euro edition for me, because it's like I'm meeting all the UK. So the UK boys have actually taken to social media very well, right? So when I see them and I'm like, yo, what's good, boys? Like, da da da. It's like a fun thing. You get to meet people. I get to see people from, you know, maybe I only see them at Sheffield and I see them here, or I only see them at Worlds and I see them here. So you do get that at the world level, but it's different. It's the international version. So it is going to be very interesting um, to see how things play out in the coming years. Um, 200 people already signed up for Nats seven months out. I like uh, uh, my lifters still have to sign up. Um, but yeah, I know it's going to be, I know it's going to be something, something special. Um, so you said, they, there's, have, go ahead. Have they announced a hard cap for Palestine America? I have not heard of a hard cap um but i could find out because i can only assume today. it's going to be lower just because they won't have the refs um it will be at least like i would literally bet money that it's going to be like at least 400 at least um yeah that's a half that's a half full meet already yeah how so... was how was junior nets in terms of how many people went it, it was like For PA. it felt like there was way more people at junior nats than there were at open nats oh, junior okay. nats was like a lot um the warm-up room was like crazy there was a lot of kids there um junior worlds was like dude you go in the warm-up room and you're like i can't even step i can't move i can't go anywhere so it's gonna be you know i think it's gonna be good i'm not um the amount of, I mean, everything kind of follows like where the, where, like, what are most people going to see? If, if you have a thousand people that do one meet, but you have 50 people that do another meet, but those 50 people have a combined hundred thousand followers, hundred million followers. And the, and the thousand people have like, you know, 10,000 followers. The thing that most people are looking at is probably what they're going to know. And that's probably what they're going to go to. That's why I'm so excited about the world games this year. Cause it's going to be the first time that we have like, um, power, like anybody with like any significant social media doing that meet to show the rest of the world, like, Hey, this is what the world games is. And I think this is going to be like a huge catalyst, like moving forward. Um, but anyway, going back to, uh, Mr. Isaac. So, um, you said the heaviest that we had gone in training was like not heavy. And then on meet day, you like blasted, you know, 750, you hit the heaviest bench you had hit in a bit. Um, your total was nice. So I know squat, remind me what happened with squat. Cause I don't, I don't remember what happened on your third squat. Squat was great. Um, heaviest I went in training for that was 640 and I ended up at 695. So very good. Huge. There we go. You're probably just like giga fatigued all prep. So we just need to like do nothing. No accessories ever again. Um, <laughs> okay. And then how many boys did you handle? Um, yeah. So <laughs> it depends on how you want to classify handle because I had people coming up to me just asking for my opinion, asking into work 
ask him to work in on a rack. Um, we had what I kind of designated as like a flex rack and it was just like a bunch of yeah. flex boys and we had people helping out there. Um, and so, I mean, the, the day before I competed, so Saturday, there's probably like seven people that I was working in and out with. Um, and that was definitely hectic when you got seven different people on four different platforms all running at different times. And it's it was like just me. So it's that was like a first as far as having to really work where you're going to be. Um, it was really cool, though. I would say it definitely gave me some experience as far as like it's different when you can say, OK, I'm working with just this one person. So I'm able to yeah. walk them through the entire plan while I'm doing it. Whereas this was the first time where I'm like, okay, hey, listen, I need you to take this warm up in two minutes. You need to tell them that you need this loaded. And then I would like basically set them up for success and then like run away and go like do something that I needed to do. So it was definitely more of like a learning experience as far as learning how to set up the lifter to be able to do what I want them to do while I'm not there. The tough thing about that is like, we literally can't help. Um... <laughs> <laughs> we'll get banned. Yeah. So and. it's like, it's like, it's a tough thing. Um, it is definitely a tough thing. And I mean, shout out. I mean, thanks for, you know, that's one thing that, uh, I forget what meet it was at, but it had to have been a PA meet, but it was like big body, Mikey, Jesus, myself, I think Camden was there. You might have been there. It might have been that one um, collegiates. The last one I did before I took the ban was 2022, I believe. And, like, we were all just helping each other's lifters. And I just love seeing that. Like, everybody was just helping everybody. And it didn't matter who their coach was. It was like, there's a flex guy here. We got you. Like, we're just going to do it. Um, and that's what we try to do. Um, it's just with Article 14, it's like a tough thing. So you really kind of pulled through for the team. Whereas I remember last year, Chris had to handle like fucking 20 people or something um, because I couldn't be there. So it was just like everybody's just kind of trying to pull their weight where they can and contribute where they can to keep this ship moving forward. And I mean, you know, it's it's like I can't be everywhere at once. Will can't be everywhere at once. Mikey can't be everywhere at once. Um you know, for Sheffield, I have multiple, like, world-level lifters lifting for tens of thousands of dollars, like, all at the same time. So, like, to, you know, imagine the, the, the stress. That's uh, so why I'm not by myself. I always have, like, a bunch of other people there. Thank you, SPD, for being accommodating. They even have helpers in the back. Um, so, it's, it's I, I know the stress of having, like, all those people going at the same time. Um, I, re I remember one of my first local meets that I ever coached at in like 2013 or something, 2014, uh, I had eight people going across three platforms, um, at the same time. And I remember just going like, just go to one platform. You look at the lift, call the number, go to the next platform. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, it's good that you're getting that experience because I think when you can handle that, bro, one lifter is like too easy. It's like. Oh, I only got only nine lifts. That's nothing, you know, not 27. Um, you know, now, obviously, we want the lifter to have as much help as we can. And ideally, there would be like, let's say we had like three flex coaches there. So we had two people always loading one person on the platform, like all the time. And then maybe we had like one more helper that would just get everybody, you know, solid and squared away. But usually... In that situation where the warm-up room is like crazy busy, um, there's tons of people there that can help out. So it always, um, it always ends up working out. Even like I don't think there's been a single world where like someone from another country, um, unless it's open. But like for juniors, like there's always someone that will just help. Like hey, just come work in with us, um, and everybody has everybody's back. And that's one of the cool things about about powerlifting. Um, so that being said, you had a good meet. You handled a bunch of lifters. Um, how are your injuries doing now? And yeah, how are your injuries doing now? The back, the knee, mm -hmm. the hip, all that. They're okay. Um, I think it's been more about... I think leading up to this meet, it was more about how can I lift in a way 
that doesn't make them worse, which is why I just didn't take that top end, um, is because I hadn't quite figured that out. Now it's more about managing them and just making sure that I'm doing the things to create like long-term health. Um, so it's more about prehab rehab stuff now and just load management rather than actually changing my technique. I feel like things are much better in a technical aspect as far as me not creating the pain. So now it's just about moving around. Um, what was your, like, did you have any pain meat day? Um, I had like a tiny, tiny bit on bench before I started warming yeah. up, but that's happened. That happened last meet as well. And then by the time I got to like my second to last warm up, it was gone. So not really any pain on anything. I mean, that's, it's okay to have pain. It's okay to, you know, go through these things, especially when, I mean, you have competed at world. So you know what it's like to kind of go push hard for local meat, push hard for nationals, push hard for worlds. And then got to push hard again for national. Like you just kind of get in this cycle of there's no like switching the gears back. Um, now I feel like just because we've been through it so many times, we're so much better at that. Just trying to keep, I mean, Keiko, Keiko, Russ. If you look at like the big names that have been with, been on the team for a long time, even Ina, right? Will, like you got to, we have to get good at keeping the lifter in the game um in order to meet all those obligations like i remember i mean i'll never forget um keiko felt pretty spent after the first sheffield and then like we had to like convince him like you could win another world championship and you could do another sheffield and like we just got through it you know we used all that experience um but then he did have to kind of take a reset like you did um you know what was it like three months to just like don't live heavy, you know, but all his strength came back like within we haven't even finished eight weeks back. It's literally the eighth week and he pulled that 350 kg and like he's back now. And so I guess that could give people some, uh, you know, use Isaac and Keiko as an example. If you have to take the time to fix things, it's OK. Um, and it will come back in, you know, it will come back in a similar or maybe even a little bit less amount of time than it took you know, for you to, to get those things squared away. And that just, how long have you been powerlifting now? Uh, um, eight years. That is, that is, and uh, okay. So you're 23, 24. So you've been powerlifting for eight years. Your training age is not that young. So that makes a lot of sense. It's, that actually makes like a lot of sense. Um, Will, how long have you been powerlifting? My first meet, 2013, but I was training it, 2011. So, third, uh, oh. 13 years? Yeah. When, a how, whole old, how, years. How, how, how old were you, Isaac? Uh, 11. 2013. <laughs> <laughs> Stronger than me still? What the fuck? No. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I'm sure if we had Lane Norton on here, we can ask him, like, what kind of injuries he's dealt with. He's going to have, like, a giant list. You know, I saw he something. He's going to have all the scientific total. names for him, too. Yeah, I saw a, a thing on, uh, I think it was, like, Threads or something, where it's, like, powerlifting and some amount of, like, pain is, like, they just go together. Um now, I will say I've gotten really, really good at people competing. And after the meet being like, nothing hurts, I'm ready to train. Um, and that is a cool thing because it allows you to kind of get going towards your next goal. Um, and especially with these Europeans, like we just did Worlds. Now we got to do Euros in five weeks. So it's like right back, right back to shit, you know, like right back to the meat grinder. So you had a couple compete like the week after the meet too, didn't you? Yeah, Regan did. Yeah, Regan, but he's crazy. Like, I would say that we didn't go all out on his deadlift. And then the next week he was able to just like send it and hit like 370 something. But he still pulls conventional. Um, He is really young, though, and he recovers like ridiculously fast. Like, kid you not, he'll go in the gym and he'll press like 225, like touch and go. And I'm like, 
that's really strong, man. But I mean, we're doing worlds. We got to pause it. They're going to be really strict on you. And he will go in the gym the next day and pause it and then be like, is that good? And I'm like, what is recovery? Like, I yeah, don't know. so I just, I just redid the workout coach. Is this good enough? Now? <laughs> <laughs> Literally like it's, it's, he's at that level. And it's crazy because when I was 21, I was like that. I was just like, I can't be fatigued. I just want to train all the time. I actually think I was in a perpetual state of fatigue. Um, and I remember talking to one of my college coaches that like, man, like I hate resting. Like I lose muscle. And he's like, bro, you don't lose muscle that quick. You're just like not pumped, you know? Um, but I mean, to be that young and to just, just be able to go ham, it's, uh, it's, uh, you can use that time when you're extremely durable to get ahead for sure. Um, and I think if you add some guidance in on top of that, you can really like just, I mean, Isaac, I'm sure from like 16 to 19, you probably put on like a ton of muscle or it might've been like 19 to 21 or 20. I got stronger, but I just kind of got fat. <laughs> well, you were playing football, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, so next question is, uh, what are your plans uh, for your future of of Isaac Whistler's powerlifting as a lifter and a coach? Do you – and I'm kind of, like, referring to, like, what fed are you kind of leaning more towards? Um, and, and, yeah. We'll see by Monday. <laughs> we'll see by Monday. <laughs> yeah, okay. So um, – actually have to sort that out as soon as possible but right now we're just kind of dealing with getting isaac over uh, or trying to get him over to pa it's a little bit complicated because technically he was with usvi so um soon this will all be be done and i mean i'd love to have you at uh you know the junior meets next year open nats whatever whatever big meets you can do there's a you know, there's some really fun local meets that are coming up and there's going to be definitely more meets like Raleigh. Um, you know, that was a super fun meet. And I think it is, it is a nice treat for the lifters that like, Hey, you're a very competitive lifter. Maybe you weren't able to get first place in the open. Um, you know, here's like a bunch of money you could win if you handle business. So I think that was super cool that they did that shout out to SPD and, um, yeah. Um, Isaac, where can people find you these days? Instagram. What's your Instagram? <laughs> I'll link it below. I underscore Whistler. You can also find them at flextrainingsystems.com under the coaches tab. And if you click next to his name, there's a little testimonials thing. You can find young lifters that have worked with Mr. Isaac. Um, you can also find Will there. I think that's I think that's pretty good for now. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments or anything, let me know in the comments below. And um, Isaac, Will, is there anything that you guys want to say before we dip out? Stay in the pocket. Stay in the pocket. It's a good, that's a good one. That's it. You, could, you could stay so far in the pocket, and then on meet day, you can hit what Isaac hit. A bajillion so, more pounds. There you go. Leave the pocket. Leave the pocket. Okay. Send it. All right, boys. Send it. Send it in the comments down below. Peace.